Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Singleton. God damn! Look at y'all. You know, uh, we're going to do a kind of a analog or approximation of an actual church service tonight. And there is no way you can do anything about a church service that is just not wrong. <laughs> so we can't fuck it up. That's kind of liberating, isn't it? God damn, like I said. Welcome to Revival! Some folks going to get revived tonight. We going to get the victory over self-restraint. We going to out-sing, out-praise, out-babble, and out-rock every roller who was every, ever holy. We're going to have fun doing it, too. God damn! God damn. <laughs> this is participatory theater. <laughs> We're going to do this together. As a group. As a congregation. So if you got reservations, cancel them. <laughs> if you got a stick up your ass, get it out of there. <laughs> Let's raise hell and put a chunk under it. <laughs> Can I get a goddamn? Goddamn! God 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 We're gonna get this thing going by having everybody stand up. Come on, y'all, stand up. Now turn around and greet somebody. No, I'm serious. Shake hands, say how it's a pleasure to meet one of such obvious taste and refinement or some such shit. Oh! That's enough of that shit. Sit the fuck down. can feel the spirit of atheistic abandon in this hall tonight. <laughs> Remain standing if you would. <laughs> or get your asses back up. You know, hold oh, it, Brother Sam drinks beer. Somebody's going to come as a surprise some of y'all. It's a Jamaican red stripe beer. <laughs> Reaper in a bottle. <laughs> you know, in a in a legit revival, I use that I, I, I use the term legit uh, in the ironic sense. <laughs> In a legit revival, the proceedings are interrupted every so often so the congregation can all compete for God's attention <laughs> by trying to holler their thanks at him louder than anybody else. <laughs> that would be your praise. Mark Brother, da Brother Sam down is in favor of praise 100%. Amen. Favor of praise. praise Only... There is no shortage of real people to praise without resorting to mythical beings. So uh, I want you all to think of somebody you're thankful to. Uh, 
Charles Darwin, Emily Dickinson, your brother-in-law, oh hush. Uh, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you're thankful to Brother Sam. In which case, just let me uh, say in advance, all oh, shit. <laughs> now uh, I want y'all to just get to praising whoever that is right now. Praise them out loud. <laughs> Brother Sam, hell yeah! Oh, that's the very ship. God damn! Sit your asses down. Welcome from New Orleans. He without whom this would be an a cappella revival, which is an abomination against all that is indecent and unholy. Lift up your voices in praise for Brother Chris Saunders on the keyboard. <laughs> Let's get Brother JT up here to lead us in the song service. Brother JT, get your ass up here. Everybody pray. Yeah. <laughs> Please turn in your hymnals to page number five. Now, if y'all don't know the lyrics, just holler the words in red. Sorry, JT, I don't mean to step on you. No, your it's mind. all right, it's all right. The good book does, doesn't say you need to sing so much as make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All right. We're going to tell the church to shove off. Although I'm not sure shove is the word he meant to put in there. All right. Crooked preachers in the church. Claiming tax exempt status. What the hell are we gonna do? And tell the church to shove off. 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 That was pretty weak. How about we get everybody on their feet? It worked for Sam. Let's do it again. There's teachers from the church pushing God in the classroom. What the hell are we going to do? And tell the church to shove off. Everybody, tell the church to shove off. 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 Church to shove off. That was a little better. Let's make a joyful noise unto Athos. There are bullies in the church trying to take away our rights. What the hell are we going to do? And tell the church to shove off. 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 This is the American Atheist verse. There are billboards for the church. <laughs> Nearly everywhere you look. What the hell are we gonna do? Tell the church to shove off. 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 Everybody to the high note. Tell the church to shove off. Tell the church to shove off. Last verse. There are bigots in the church. Telling folks who to marry. What the hell are we going to do? And tell the church to shove off. 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 And tell the church to shove off.
All shall just say standing. People put more money in the collection, collection plate when they're standing. You ready, Brother Chris? This brain won't abide no liars. This brain. This brain won't abide no liars. This brain. This brain won't abide no liars. Tell evangelists and testifiers. This brain won't annihil no liars. This brain don't have no soul. This brain don't have no soul. This brain. This brain don't have no soul. This brain is under its own control. This brain don't have no soul. This brain. If you're not clapping, you go to hell. Don't have no myths. This brain. This brain don't have no myths. This brain. This brain don't believe no myths. Say it does, and this brain gets pissed. This brain don't have no myths. This brain. This brain ain't superstitious. This brain. This brain ain't superstitious. This brain. This brain ain't superstitious. So it can think just what it wishes. This brain ain't superstitious. This brain. Skepticon 5! Thank you, Brother JT! Oh! All right. You know, the program says this is where we're supposed to take up the offering. Uh -huh. But, you know, we're going to go directly into the testimony service instead. Uh, but don't fret yourselves about missing out on the chance to get in on the offering. <laughs> we'll tend to it presently. I'm going to ask Brother Ed, you all in the, you in the house, Brother Ed, get your ass up here. I'm going to ask Brother Ed to come down and lead testimony service. There he is. Uh, Brother Ed, take this microphone right here. God am. Thank now, you, Brother uh, uh, Brother Ed's going to give a little testimony of his own. Then he's going to go out in the first few rows. And if three or four of y'all want to give your testimony about something wonderful that has happened in your life or in the history of humankind of a secular nature, this is your big moment. Ed will bring you the, uh, Brother Ed will bring you the microphone, Brother Ed. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sam. God damn. It's good. Yeah, it's good to be here. I'm very thankful today. I came here 26 years ago to Springfield, Missouri to become a missionary, go to seminary in the Assembly of God. And I learned a lot of weird things in seminary. <laughs> One thing I learned being in church for all those years, it was probably about 15, 20 years I was in there, is that uh, first I thought, there's a lot of good people in the church. And there's a lot of assholes. Rebecca Watson said I could say that word. But, uh, there are a lot of assholes outside the church. And it took me a while to realize that uh, there's a lot of good people outside the church, too. And there's a lot of assholes in the church. And you'd think, if all the stuff the church tries to shove down your throat is true, there'd at least be slightly more good people than assholes in the church. But I think it comes down to just statistics. There's assholes in every group, and there's good people in every group. I like to think I meet more good people here, though. I have more fun anywhere. <laughs> Let's find somebody else to say hi to here. Raise your hand. So grateful for having Brother Sam here. 
I was an atheist until two things happened. I finished reading the Bible, not joking, and I was a Christian until I saw Greta Christina speak at Skepticon 4 today, and boy, that sure as fuck changed my mind. God damn. God damn. It's good to know we're changing lives here. I just want to say I used to be a sinner, I used to be a believer, and I read the good word of the Skeptical Inquirer magazine, I read the good word of Oliver Sacks and V.S. Ramachandran, I learned I have no soul and this life is all there is. Praise the universe. Nobody else over here? Way in the middle over here. I just wanted to say when I came last year to Skepticon, I had a broken leg. I prayed to Joe Pesci and it was healed. I had two surgeries. I had two surgeries, but that had nothing to do with it. It was Joe Pesci. Yeah. A few more, a few more. I'm, all these good people here, I'm just so glad that they get the credit for being good and that we don't have to bring God into the mix and say God gets the credit for these people's goodness. You are the good people. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> One more. I just want to say that the first 14 years of my life were wasted. Then I took a biology class and became enlightened. And now I'm joining y'all. Any last one? One more. Oh, one up here. Okay. I just wanted to, my name is Ray. I just wanted to thank the atheist community for uh, supporting me and my family when I broke my leg. Thank you very much. God damn! God damn! Up until I was 15 years old, I was a sinner. I believed in the Lord and the word of Jesus Christ and all he could do. And then I met this wonderful man named Shadow, and he showed me how much of a dumb fuck I was. I also want to thank the wonderful women who showed me the beauty of Planned Parenthood, and then I can get on the pill. God damn! Good news indeed. Thank you, Brother Ed! Brother Ed! You know what I'm thankful for? Beer. And y'all. I'm thankful for y'all. Oh, shit. You know, the testimony service customarily leads right into some more praise. This time, let's all stand up. Yeah, it reminds you why you don't go to church anymore, doesn't it? Let's all stand up, and I want everybody to loudly express thanks for something that did not happen. This, I want you to talk right over each other about anything at all just so it has not actually happened. Use your imagination. Maybe, hush, maybe you did not actually get abducted by aliens and probed within an inch of your innards. Maybe you did not wake up encased in a giant Venus flytrap half digested by plant enzymes. How about this whole rapture deal? I bet you're glad that didn't happen. It doesn't matter what it wasn't, just so it wasn't. So, like I say, let's everybody just let the praises ring right at one another till I say, God damn, then sit, let her rip. Oh, I'm glad that I didn't get eaten by a big old bug this morning. Oh, I would have hated that shit right there. It would have been awful. Oh. God damn!
You know... There's too many of us here tonight to do a Jericho march. We, gonna do, we were going to do a Jericho march. Brother Chris was going to light into a, a spirited rendition of uh, Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. He did, you know. And uh, and we were going to have everybody jump up and walk around and around, but when you got 1,100 people in a room this size, we just can't do that shit. So we're going to combine the offering service with Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. You know, all legit evangelists are really in the collections business. They're, they're, they're the Lord's thumb breakers. <laughs> and all of the godly are all chronically behind on their payments. And the evangelist's job is to cajole or browbeat them into bringing their accounts current. Lean on them. So I want you all to picture Brother Sam as a legit evangelist. I know it's hard. Try squinting one eye. You know, if I were the same said legit evangelist, I might start by invoking the book of Acts chapter 4. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet laid them down at the apostles' feet. God damn. Then, I could lay on some gospel according to Luke 6 and 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over. And since it is not feasible to actually turn individual members of the congregation upside down and shake the money out their pants. <laughs> I'd hit them with the biblical equivalent thereof, the third chapter of Malachi. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. <laughs> hey, I don't write this shit. <laughs> I say horse shit, horse shit, and horse shit. <laughs> what is true is that we're taking up this offering in lieu of a regular fee. Skepticon has got enough to do without taking on Brother Sam's care and feeding. So as the offering baskets come around, we might need some house lights up. As the offering baskets come around, help out as much as you can. Thank you, and uh, brother, uh, while uh, Brother Chris plays, we're going to circulate the offering basket.
Thank you. Can I get a goddamn? The word thanks appears in the King James Version of the Bible exactly 100 times. 99 of them are, time, are directed at God. Here's the sole exception. It's from the Apostle Paul there in the 16th chapter of his epistle to the Romans. Greet Priscilla and Aquila my helpers in Christ Jesus who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks but also all the churches of the Gentiles. One thing about the Apostle Paul, he thought a great deal of himself. But he did give the world Christianity. So there's that. Goddamn Paul. Anyway, that's the one time in the whole damn Bible in which anybody other than God gets any thanks. And it's second hand and they have to split it two ways. Not once in the Old Testament... Does anybody offer so much as a passing, appreciate it, to one of their fellow humans? The King James Bible, and lo, any other kind, is just a little old toy Bible. <laughs> uh, uh, a Fisher Price Bible. The King James Version of the Bible is regarded as one of the greatest works of literature in the English canon. It's certainly one of the longest. <laughs> this is the mythological history that subsequent dominant cultures the world over have claimed as their own, and only once in the Bible does one single person say thank you to another. No wonder everybody was mad all the time running around, starting shit, <laughs> slaying and smiting so. Even though they were despicably rude to one another, they were polite as all get out to their deity. With the deity, it was, oh, thank you, God. Seriously, God, we just thank the shit out of you. And they imbued their deity with all their own worst qualities so they could say that being morally, intellectually, and emotionally weak was divine. So their God was racist and sexist and homophobic and generally ignorant and intolerant. <laughs> Absolutely self-interested. Naturally, they made it a boy deity. And he was, above all, as Brother Sam is wont to point out, wildly mad with jealousy. Along those same lines, he was insecure and covetous. And chief among all the things their God coveted, all the things he hogged, was gratitude. He insisted that every damn bit of the credit and praise go to himself. Like I say, the people created him, so they got to make him crazy like that. <laughs> they said they were created in his image. And they used the deity being a fucking creep as a pretext for their own despicable rudeness <laughs> like his Jesus character he combined the worst attributes of God and man 
one time. He's visiting with this Pharisee by the name of Simon. The Bible is thick with guys named Simon. <laughs> and uh, while Jesus is talking to Simon there, this harlot, uh, these days we say sex worker, <laughs> walks in off the street and gets down at Jesus' feet and starts into crying and literally washing his feet with her tears. Apparently the mere sight of the Lord's aching feet set her off like that. <laughs> You've heard the story. And, and she rubs ointment on his crusty ass first century feet. And then, and then rubs them in her hair. And the whole time, she's just smothering those smelly old dogs with kisses. Right there on the floor in front of all these people. Simon is a bit of a Puritan. He says to himself, but so Jesus can't help overhearing. He says, verily, man of God ought to be consorting with members of the, or workers in the sex trade. Don't look right. <laughs> Jesus says, verily yourself, Simon. I don't see you ministering to my corns and calluses. <laughs> Plus, I am setting an example here for subsequent generations of preachers regarding how they should deal with their sex workers. <laughs> Wait till they finish pleasuring you, then forgive them for it. <laughs> and you, little girl, for he speaketh to Martha, you can just consider all your sins up to this point absolved. <laughs> uh, you missed a spot on my heel there. <laughs> Simon mumbled something like, uh, well, sure, I want to go to heaven, but I don't know about this foot thing. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and the moral is, <laughs> well, I am in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> the moral is, it does not matter what you do. Seriously, you can get down on the floor and wash Jesus' feet with your fucking tears. <laughs> your tears for Christ's sakes. <laughs> and kiss those feet. And slather them with unguent. And get them all up in your hair. And there is no way any part of the Godhead is going to say thanks. Uh, he may offer to forgive your sins or some equally meaningless shit. <laughs> but don't look for a simple, well, thank you for the toe job. <laughs> Nobody in the Bible, certainly not Jesus, knows anything about the simple satisfaction that comes from offering a sincere thank you to one who deserves it. Nothing of being on the receiving end of that worthy thanks. Their loss. You'd feel sorry for them if they weren't such assholes. <laughs> and beyond the 
humane impetus to say thank you. Common courtesy enables folks to live cooperatively around one another. Like I say, to see what happens in the absence of good manners, read the Bible. <laughs> Everything goes to hell. Can't nobody get along. Somebody say God damn. You know, gratitude is among the more becoming of human attributes. Its absence is seen or felt as acutely uncivilized. Anybody who withholds the thanks you got coming is a jerk. But way worse than that is delivering that thanks to the wrong party. That'll flat torque your nut. <laughs> it is an offense against fairness. <laughs> Who would be such a low down, no conscience having, cretinous carton of crap as to do anybody that away? Let me illustrate. On my way out here to Springfield Thursday, I just come one of, uh, of getting caught up in a five-car wreck uh, out on the interstate. It was awful. They had I-44 closed both ways. A man died. Folks were badly hurt. And if I'd happened along just a minute or two earlier, I could have been right in the middle of that. I'm thankful I wasn't. Something... Actually, it was my bladder is what it was. <laughs> Made me choose that exact time to stop and do as nature intends. <laughs> so, even as the carnage was being cleared, there I was safely stuck in the traffic jam, basking in the afterglow of bodily relief cherished by all travelers. <laughs> Of course, my making a pit stop right in time to avoid the wreck was a coincidence. If I were still a believer, I'd be bound to ascribe that timely urge to purge to the, to the creator of the universe working his divine purpose by means of my urinary tract. So while I was sitting there, I got to thinking, how many of the people in the other cars and trucks all backed up for miles in both directions were thanking God for their deliverance from calamity? Not me, of course. I mean, I was thankful. I have no problem using thankful and, and appreciative and grateful and glad to describe my feelings when circumstances break my way, when chance happens to favor my interests. And I found myself pondering, who would I think if I took a mind to credit somebody for my being spared, even though they had nothing to do with it? And I decided that the next time I saw Sister Katie Hartman, I would thank her. So uh, I have just been waiting for this opportunity. Is uh, Sister Katie in the house? Sister Katie, is she out there? Get her in here. It doesn't matter. So, uh, Sister Katie, stand up, please. There you are. I want to thank you for doing that thing you did with my bladder. So I did not become just one more atheist evangelist shaped stain on the highway. Now let's everybody raise our voices in praise to Sister Katie. Praise Sister Katie. God damn. Thank you, Sister Katie. Oh! 
Megan's sister, Katie. <laughs> oh, I heard somebody say, Brother Sam, but a sister Katie is not God. That is exactly right. Sister, sister Katie exists. <laughs> See, look at her. And me thanking her certainly makes no less sense than those other people thanking God. And, and giving God the credit for that coincidence doesn't screw Sister Katie out of her due. But when believers divert the stream of praise that common decency reserves for the worthy, for the nourishment of the individual and the community, I am, in, I am obliged to call bullshit on them. It, it wouldn't be the least surprising if one of the injured out there on the highway, having been saved by the combined efforts of EMTs and nurses and physicians. Amen. <clears throat> gave the credit to their deranged deity. Suck eggs, trauma team. I'm thanking God. <laughs> now, if I was one of those medical professionals, I'd want to say something my damn self. <laughs> Along the lines of, uh, next time haul your dying ass to church, you fucking ingrate. What do you want with some old medical professional? Get Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. God damn. You know, even the perfunctory thank offered by but the perfunctory thanks offered by a by a, a fast food server has value. It honors cooperation the very basis of society, it is directed at somebody. What if the person who handed you your Happy Meal and took your money looked skyward and thanked Jesus? <laughs> I'm not a man to... I'm not a man to advocate throwing food. <laughs> but I couldn't say you nay if you heaved a French fry at him. <laughs> Don't blame God for the bad behavior of the godly. What with not existing, God does not have the power to co-opt the, the measure of gratitude that you or I have coming. That bit of ethical skullduggery takes a human accomplice. And what a rotten business it is. It cheapens the very idea of sincere gratitude, rendering it so inconsequential as to be blithely bestowed on some hoodoo. For shame. Antisocial behavior wise, I'm not sure which is worse. Thanking the wrong party or thanking an imaginary party. I guess that's the difference between bad and crazy. Either way, for theists, nothing on earth can ever be truly first rate. And that's crazy. Turning your nose up at what this life offers in the pursuit of a bigger payoff in some additional life it does not make you holy. It makes you a jackass. <laughs> a holy jackass and a greedy jackass. So you'll fit in in heaven. 
which gets us back to God cornering the market on gratitude. Of the, mi of the billions of times some human has offered deeply felt thanks, God has never acknowledged it, even once. And if I were that hypothetical believer, and I were hoping God might sometimes speak to me like he does to presidential candidates, the very first words out of God's mouth had better be, you're welcome. <laughs> or don't mention it. That'd be acceptable. Anything other than that, I'd tell him to go to hell. <laughs> God damn. You know, if this were a legit revival, the organist would begin playing what Holy Rollers call an invitational at this point, which is a sort of mood song intended to soften you up for the altar call. The evangelist would say some shit about how this is your chance to come forward and get right with the Lord while the getting is good. Well, Y'all look all right to me. <laughs> so fuck it. <laughs> now we arrive at the benediction. An exercise in irony if ever there was one. Cause Brother Sam ain't blessing shit. <laughs> but I do want to send y'all along with a word of encouragement. A wise and handsome man once said, Luck is a good description and a terrible explanation. Well, I count myself lucky to be here with y'all. And I can't appear at a gathering of atheists without remarking on how special it is to be in the majority for a while. It's stimulating. It, 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 it feels good. It feels safe. Hell, I'd say we're all pretty lucky. Sister Katie, Brother Cody Works, Brother Jeffrey Marcus, Sister Blythe Clutter, Brother Rob Lair, Brother Tim Buchanan, put together Skepticon for us. so we can share this wonderful experience. So I want y'all to latch on to as much of what we're feeling right now as you can and pack it out of here with you and nurture it so that when you feel outnumbered, when it seems that everywhere you look, you can't see anything but crosses and steeples. When all you hear from political leaders is backward bullshit. When otherwise decent people give themselves over to the illogical, immoral and uncivil pursuit of selfish superstition. 
so that in the face of all that, you can summon forth the power of this great multitude. Because we're with you. Thank you. Good night. God damn it. <laughs>